Hello and welcome to episode 23 of ARM Template Masterclass. This week we're going to be continuing our look at the bicep language and how we can use that to create our ARM templates. So last week, if you haven't seen episode 22, I'd recommend you go and have a look. In that episode, we went through what bicep is, why you might want to use it, and took a look at how a bicep template works. Today, we're going to take a deeper dive into that and have a look at authoring bicep templates and how the different components of an ARM template, sorry, a bicep template work. Okay, so here we have a very simple bicep template, and we're going to have a look at some of the basic components that we've used um, in this template, similar to how we did at the beginning of our the looking at ARM templates um, and see how you actually construct them and the language used to build them. So first up, we're going to have a look at parameters. So you're familiar with these from ARM templates. These are how we pass in values into our template that we can then use at runtime. So how we make our templates more generic and reusable. Parameters in um, Bicep use the param keyword to designate its parameter. And if you remember, we said from the last video, um, we've lost the rigid structure from uh, ARM templates. So we don't have to put them inside a parameter section like we did previously. All you've got to do is put them somewhere in the file and they need to be in place before you try and use them. So you can't you know, put them all at the end or anything like that. So there are different ways you can you can write and configure parameters. So the simplest option is the first one we've got here. We've got a parameter called supports HTTPS traffic only. And so we've got the name and then we've got the type. So the, the bool in this case. And, and in this case, we're also giving it a default value. You don't have to do that. So you could delete the equals true bit off the end. Um, and that would just give you a parameter where the user had to define the, uh, the value. But what we've got here is a, a sort of simplest approach the, the parameter keyword, the name, the type, and then if we want to, a default value. And if you wanted to do all your parameters like that, you could, that would work fine. Um, but there are some more advanced features you can use. So if you remember from ARM templates, you can add some uh, constraints around your parameters. So you can add things like minimum, max length, um, you can have allowed values and, and so on. These have all been translated into bicep, so you can do the same thing. And the way this is done in bicep is with this concept of decorators. So using the at symbol, you would then define the particular constraint above the parameter you want. So you see here, we've got the storage account name. Um, it's defined as a string. There's no default value on this. Um, but what we want to do is set the minimum length and the maximum length. So there are two constraints here, min length and max length, and we've added them as decorators to that parameter. So we just use the at and then the name of the constraints and then in brackets, we've got the value. So we want it to be three, between three and 24 characters long. And you can combine as many of the decorators as you want. So if you want to have min length, max length, allowed values and so on in all one, you can, you can do that. In the next one, so the storage skew, we actually want to define a, an allowed values list. Um, so this is an array of strings that can be passed in um, to satisfy this parameter. And so we're only allowing the users to say they want either a standard LRS storage account or a standard GRS. If they try something else like you know, premium, um, it won't work. It will give you an error. Or obviously, if it's a value that's not actually valid at all, it will also give you an error as well. The so same thing, we're adding an allowed decorator. Um, but in this case, the value in that brackets is an array rather than an integer. And we're passing that in. We can combine that still with the default value. So you can see on the right there, we're setting it to standard LRS as the default. Um, so we can combine those two together. And one other thing I wanted to bring up is there is another way to define these um, constraints in your parameters. And so you can see here on this uh, location option, I'm setting allowed values actually as part of the parameter. So this was this was how, when Bicep was first released, this was how you define constraints. You basically added a, a section of what's effectively JSON underneath the parameter um, that defines those constraints. As you can see from the visual code extension here, um, that's been striked through because that's now deprecated. That is not the right approach to use. You should be using the decorators, um, but I just wanted to show you that in case you see any examples, you can still do that. I expect it'll probably be removed from the language at some point, um, but at the minute it does still work, um, but it is deprecated. So I would recommend you stick with the decorators approach that we saw in the ones above. Okay, so that's parameters. Then the next type of, of, of resource we're gonna to want to use is variables. And variables are very simple. You've just got the var keyword, you've got the name, and then the value. And you can define as many variables as you want um, using that var keyword. And yeah, they're very 
very straightforward. There's not really a lot to be saying about variables. Then we move on to the resources. So these are the actual things we want to deploy themselves. Um, and we talked a bit about this in the previous video, but we'll just we'll just go over it again um, to make sure it's clear. So a resource is what you want to deploy and you can have as many resources as you want and you can define them anywhere in the template, like I said before, but they all start with the resource keyword. So that indicates that it's you actually want to deploy a resource. Next, you've got the actual name of the resource you're going to use in Bicep. So this is not the name of the thing you're deploying in Azure. So this is not what the storage account will be called when you deploy it to Azure. It's what you want to use to name this particular resource in your Bicep template so that you can refer to it later. So if you want to you know, have another resource be dependent on it or output a value from it, it needs a name to uniquely identify it in the template. You can call it whatever you want. It just needs to be unique in the template. And it is not, as I say, it will not affect what the name of the actual resource in Azure is. So those two can be different. Then we've got the actual um, resource type and API version header. Unlike in ARM templates, where this is part of the actual resource itself, this is part of the, the header, um, but it's the same thing. We're going to identify the type of resource um, and the subcategory of resource. So in this case, it's, it's a Microsoft storage provider, and then we want the storage account resource. And then we need the API version. So the at symbol then following that is the particular API version we want to use um, to deploy that resource. Then inside the actual resource is not very different from how you would have an ARM template. So the properties are going to be very similar, if not the same. Um, there might be a slightly different order, but you've got that, you know, that name and location, which is going to be on nearly every resource. Then you've got some resource specific things that you might see like SKU and kind here. And then the properties section where you define the properties of the resource. Um, and for those, you're going to obviously have to look at the particular resource you're trying to define to find out what um, particular types um, and properties are required or available for that resource. And you can get all of that from the um, specs on the Microsoft website. So if you look at the ARM template specs, everything now has a tab on it where you can also see the bicep version of the, uh, the specification as well as the uh, JSON for the ARM template. Finally, at the bottom, we've got outputs. Um, so this allows us to output values from the template, just like you could with ARM templates. Um, and this is declared in a very similar way to, uh, to var variables and parameters. You've got the output keyword, then the name of the output, the type of the output, and then the value of the output. And your your type can be you know standard types, it can be strings, it can be booleans, but you can also output objects like you could with ARM templates. So we're passing out here the entire storage endpoint object, uh, and that will then return as a template object like it with an ARM template, which you could then consume with another template. Uh, you know, if you're making this into a nested or a, or a module, which we'll talk about later, um, or you can read it in from the command line, you know, using PowerShell and so on, and and work with that. So those are the key components. You'll notice there's one missing, which is the user defined functions section, which is available in ARM templates. That's not currently available in Bicep. Um, so you won't be able to define those. They're not particularly heavily used. So I can't imagine most many people are particularly uh, concerned about that. But if you did use them, you won't be able to use them in Bicep for the moment. There is a GitHub item about adding them. So I expect them to be added at some point in the future. Okay, here we've got a, another more complex example. Um, we're just deploying a virtual network in this example, but we've, we're going to use some uh, some more features that you should be aware of. Um, so we've still got some parameters. What we've done is we switched from actually having a full name to a name prefix. This is nothing to do with it, with the actual functions of the template. This is just uh, how we're going to build the names for our resources, and you'll see that come into play in a minute. And then we've got this address prefixes parameter, and this is an array type. So we didn't see that in the other in the other example. Um, but this is this contains an array and we have a default value for the array here um, you can see here that i've had to put this on separate lines so this is a lot of um, bicep is actually dependent on new lines to, to designate um, you know uh, the next value and so on um, so in this case the array is spread over multiple lines it might have been nicer to read that on a single line given how small it is but uh, you do need to, to put the uh, the new lines in there we've still got the location one but we switched that back to using the decorator uh, we've got storage account kind which came from the previous one I copied so we'll get rid of that um, 
And then we've got this variable here where we're defining the VNet name. So I mentioned we've got that prefix. So what we want to do is ensure that we have a unique name for our virtual network. And so we're, we're taking that prefix as the first part of the name. And what we want to do is add some text to that, including a unique string to make sure that's uh, unique. So what we're going to do is use some functions here. So all of the functions that are available in ARM templates are available in Bicep. So any of the um, standard functions like we've got here to upper a unique string to lower um, all of the array functions, the if functions and so on. They're all available. Um, we'll look at some more of the complex ones later. Uh, but in the case of this example, what we want to do is firstly, we want to make sure that that name prefix is in uppercase. So we're using the to upper command. Now you'll notice that we've got this sort of strange dollar curly brace syntax here. So one of the functions that doesn't exist in Bicep is the concat function, or at least you shouldn't use it. Um, so when you need to do string concatenation, you don't need to use that anymore. Bicep has proper string interpolation like you see in many other languages. So we've got this the string declared here with the uh, single quote. And that's one thing to be aware of is that Bicep uses single quotes for all its text um, or a string, sorry, in um, in the template language. That's caught me out a number of times where I've looked to use double quotes, so just be aware of that. So we've got our string here, and then this dollar curly brace indicates that we actually want to write some code inside our string. So we're going to use the to upper command to uppercase that name prefix and then close that uh, interpolation bracket there. Then we've got some actual text with that VNet name or that VNet string. Um, and then we want to use the unique string function, which is going to generate a unique sort of set of strings that we can use for naming. We're passing it in the resource group ID for the resource group function and getting the ID as well there. So unique string requires a seed to determine how it generates the unique string. So it's not actually unique. If you pass in the same seed, you get the same value out which is exactly what we want, because if it was actually completely random, whenever we reran the template, it would rename the VNet, which is not what we want. So we're passing in the resource group ID. So this will ensure that this is the unique string it generates is effectively unique for that resource group. Um, and I'm not planning on deploying more than one uh, virtual network to that resource group, so that's fine. The resource group function gets us the actual resource group we're deploying into, and then the ID property so we can get the actual ID. And we're uppercasing that as well with two up. So we've strung together a number of those functions to get the, the resources we want. And that'll give us a string that we can name our resource group. And I've put that into a variable. Now, you could have done this straight down here in the name section. I've just put it in a variable just to make it a bit cleaner and to show you the use of variables. Um, but you could have done it down here. So in the resource itself, we're consuming that VNet name um, as the name the location parameter as the as the location and then we've got that address prefix array which are for which forms the value for this address space um, address prefix section our outputs are very similar we're outputting the id and then we're also going to output the address prefixes that were used and this is an array type as well so you can use all those types for inputs and you can also use them for outputs as well now just to show that that actually all works and that we can get an ARM template out at the end of it, we'll run the bicep command. So we use bicep build and the name of the file, which is example two. We'll run that. And that's now created the actual JSON file. So back in VS Code, we've got our generated ARM template here, and you can see it's translated what we defined in Bicep into the ARM JSON. So we've got our name prefix with those max length and min length values. We've got the array with our default values. Then we've got the the VNet name, which has translated this into um, ARM language using the same functions, and then our resource and outputs, which again, have been translated into the actual ARM language with the correct functions and so on in place there. Now, as mentioned previously, you don't need to look at this. This JSON is purely there as the means of actually deploying the resource. So if you want to, you can you can just generate the JSON, deploy it using the command line and, and never look at this. This is auto generated and not something you really have to care about. But if you're interested in how Bicep is translating that or you want to have a look at those details, then you can obviously break open that uh, JSON file and have a look for yourself. That'll do for today. 
Next week we'll have a look at some of the more advanced functions and features of Bicep that we can start using in our templates um, and we'll go from there. But hopefully that was enough to get you started with writing some basic uh, Bicep templates. If you've got any questions or problems with this, uh, put a comment in the video and I will be happy to answer. Otherwise, hopefully I'll see you next week. Have a great rest of your day.